Before this gets started, I'd like to point out the fact that I entirely forgot. No, I'm going to point out the fact that at some point in this video, I will say the phrase, I, did, I will not edit this video. But I did have to edit the video because of some issue, because um, one of the video clips split into two in the middle of it. But I didn't cut the video. I just strung together a few clips. So, yeah. Just keep that in mind. I apologize for lying to you. See you later. Bye. Let us go. Let us do this. And, okay. All right. Hello there. Um. So I'm gonna make one last video like this, and let's do it. So, um, we've done. Um, in part one, we did um, when equals two. Part two, we did i equals square equals. No. Um. What was I doing? Wait, what, what was it? Wait, no. Actually, no. Oh, yeah, um, we did this one. We did infinity... Infinity... Infinity equals i over square root of 6. Now we're going to be doing this. Now we're going to be doing something really epic. So we got, this is going to be my second one that uses series. So we got um, a harmonic series. How does it go? It, it's this. It, it diverges. So what is this series in? Well, it's this. Um... This is the harmonic series, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by n. Because we can totally do that. Because, you know, series, I mean, infinite series, you can totally manipulate them just how we manipulate integers. We're not going to use the square root of 6, okay? I promise. So, this will equal n equals 1 infinity n. No, one. Now, also, ha are also going to add a one over n to this side, because, you know, this is an integral, definitely. So, I forgot what this video was going to be. Um, let me think. So, there's that, and that, but... Okay, well, so we're going to do here. Actually, that's not what I actually was going to do. No, nor was I going to do that. Alright. Alright, there. So now what I was actually going to do is I was going to take the square root. Which, yeah, we're gonna do that because you can do that. Yeah. So we're gonna have, um, 
This is going to be this n equals 1 to infinity square root of 1 over square root of n. This is going to be equal 1 over square root of n plus minus. Actually, no, the series of that. Now, how do we calculate this, you may ask? Good question. I don't think we can. But at some point, we will get an incredibly epic answer. Now, what we've gotten here is we've gotten 1 over n equals 1 over square root n. Right? Now, what we're going to do is multiply. Actually, no, don't do that. Um, ignore that. Ignore what I said there. Strike what I said there from the record. Or instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do pi over... No, don't do that. Multiply by pi, okay? Because you can do that, right? In area between two curves, yeah. So, um, we're going to do pi, pi over square root of n. I know I'm really abusing um, theorems that aren't true, but it's because this is a false theorem, okay? So we got this. Now, we're going to do this is very good. Now, pi over square root of n is not, of, of course, not the same as this, right? Now, yeah, I'm actually not going to edit this video at all. I'm just going to literally just be here and try to figure out what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So, because I didn't practice this at all, I have no idea how this any of this even works. Now, 1 over square root of n, right? So, n starts at 0, and then n goes to infinity, so... The Likatry limits! Yeah, that those work, I think. But in the actual proof, how do I get pi to begin with? Okay, well... Yeah, uh, let's try limits. Uh, let's try the limit. X starts, or X approaches 1 of uh, this. This uh, n equals x, n goes to infinity. Square root n. Now, wait, so, actually I think I remember what I do now. Okay, multiply by pi. Okay, I multiply by pi, go back here. So, multiply by pi, you want pi, pi, n. Now, that's, now we have a problem. How does this work? Um, we actually don't multiply by pi, we, we do that. Uh, so, Wait, just do this, do this, try this. There. This works, I think. Yeah, well, this is practically a substitution for this integral. Even though it's not an integral. Speaking of which, why don't you know we're not going to turn into an integral, so pi over n. Does this diverge? The answer is yes. It, in fact, does diverge. Now, what we're going to do is... We're gonna, um, actually, no, um, let, yeah, let's turn this into an integral, because at this point, I literally have no idea what I'm doing, so, I don't know how to calculate definite integrals. Let's just integrate it, and just, yeah, um, now, don't do that, um, pi over... And the, yeah, this the integrate integrate this. 
I don't know. Okay. Why not try dividing? Why not try multiplying n? So, what we're going to do is we're going to do... Actually, you know, just get rid of this because, you know, we're trying to come up with a false theorem. So, we're going to have to violate fundamental rules of mathematics. So, we're going to do, we're going to do that, right? So, we're going to do pi... So, we're going to... Actually, no, we're going to, we're going to do that, actually, yeah. So, n, hang on. Pi. Yeah, just one over n, okay? Oh, pi, pi, pi. Okay. So we've 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 gone from this to this. Now what we're going to do is we know that this is just pi. So we got pi times n. What is n? Well, in order to do this. N is basically each no, number here, right? So N has an infinite amount of values. Now, uh, and yeah, it's actually every it's every rational number that with a numerator of one. That's every value of N. What's one? What's a number that has? Well, you definitely did take the square root in my thing, but. What I can try doing is, in order to do this, let's try plugging in some number. But how do we do that? Let's try and limit as n approaches as or as n approaches um, one over square root of six. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is here. This equals well pi times one over square root. Of six. All right. Now let's just assume this to be pi over square root of six. So this is our answer, right? But keep in mind, this is a limit. This is a very specific answer to a very specific number. Let's try this. Let's try the other thing. Now, well, basically, what I've done here is I've turned this into. The the answer the answer to the harmonic series is x as is some constant x times n. So now what I can do is I can try um what would be the fourth term in the series? It, it's one it's one fourth yeah it's one fourth yeah it, it's one fourth. But what I can actually do never mind I have an even epicer idea. Let's do something incredibly epic. Let's use the theorem from the last episode. Yeah, we're doing that. You're going to use the theorem from the last episode. So what we're going to do is we're going to try... Um, the theorem was infinity equals i over square root of 6. Well, I'm going to have to erase a bit because, you know... There. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do... I entirely forgot what my thing was. Um, pi. So basically we had pi and... Right? Now, we have, a, we have a limit or something? Or what, what do we do? So basically, n goes from... So n goes from 1 to infinity. Now... But well, we can change this to, as you can change this to an integral, of course. Now, an integral, an integral is going to be the integral of something. I forgot what the something was. It's the integral, um, one. Well, what is this the integral of? So, um, it's, it's the integral of something, one to infinity, but I forgot what it was. So that would be the integral of 1 to... I'm, I'm genuinely relearning calculus in the middle of this. Just bear with me. Okay, so... Here 
and it equal n squared over 2 um, from 1 to n. 1 to 3. Well, so n goes from 1 to 3. So what we're going to do is we just have this thing as n squared over 2, where, I don't, 3 squared over 2 minus 1 squared over 2, this is going to be 4, 4, 4.5 minus um, 1 half, which is going to equal 4. So now I'm done relearning definite integrals. Just, just, just okay. Yeah. So this is gonna equal the. What is the derivative of n though? It's. Is it zero or is it one? It's one. It's one. So. So. So the. So the integral. So this is gonna be. Um, going to be this is the integral of so it's the definite it's the indefinite integral of this from 1 to 3 so the indefinite integral of n is n squared over 2 wait but what is the so the derivative of this is that right so the integral of 1 is n. So, yeah, I think, yeah, I've realized that we have stopped um, violating fundamental rules of mathematics and we've started um, using real rules of mathematics in this. Now, what is the integral from 1 to infinity of 1? I think it's 1. I think it's 1. I don't know. I'm going to go look it up. I, I apologize. So yeah, I don't know how to... Oh, you use limits. Okay. <laughs> Never mind, you use limits. So it's limit as n approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to n of 1. This is, you know, it's going to equal... It's going to equal the... Um, so... N is going to approach infinity, right? Now, we're going to actually no, change that to X because that will make more sense. Avoiding that, you know. So, it's going to be the integral. It's going to be the indefinite integral from 1 to X. It's the limit of this integral to X of 1 from 1 to N. Um, now, actually, no, not that. That's x, and that's the indefinite integral. The indefinite integral of 1 is... What? The indefinite integral of 1 is n, right? So it's going to be n from 1 to x. So n from 1 to x... Is, so that means n has values between that range from 1 all the way to x. No, wait. Well, yes, actually. So to x. Actually. So that'll be from 1 to x, right? So, but the thing is, n always equals n, so this is going to be. But this is a definite integral, so I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. I'm too I'm too lazy to actually count. Look it up. So we'll find out. It's n. Okay, so it's n from one. No, let's just do n from 1 to infinity. Is it going to be infinity? No. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Don't plot it. Integrate it. The 
integral does not con converge. Um, well, what about from 1 to 6? How is that the thing? Wait. So, from 1 to 8? It's going to be infinity over 2. X, o it's X over 2. Wait, it's not, no, no, no. How does it get 60? It's N squared over 2 plus C. So it's going to be infinity squared over 2 plus C. Let me just see if I can calculate the limit, even though I can't. So, limit... As x approaches infinity, the function is going to be, um, the integral from 1 to x of 1. It's going to be n squared over 2. Gonna be and okay, it's it, it it doesn't converge, it doesn't converge. I'm not using Taylor series, it just doesn't converge. Now where's my chalk? Here's my chalk. Well now, we know what this is gonna be. I entirely forgot. Well, n squared. Over. Well, n squared over two, right? So it's going to be x squared over 2, though. Yeah, I'm going to go check again, because I genuinely don't know. Um... Oh, I have to subtract. Yeah, I forgot. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to try to, yeah, do that. So, let's erase some of this. Don't forget. Don't forget, just leave that in the corner, okay? So here we're going to do this now. There's going to be N. Let me turn it in. So it's going to be, it's, so it's F of B. So it's going to be F of X. It's going to be f of x, f is n, so n, where n equals, so it's going to be x minus 1, A x minus 1 is what I've gotten. Wait, it's going to be 8 is 64 squared minus 64 over 2 minus 1. That's 1 over 1, which is 2 over 2. So, yeah, okay. So, this is my formula I'm going to use. Infinity. N is going to equal... It's infinity minus 1. Now, you might be like, what is infinity minus 1? Well, we've got our formula. It's going to be 1, I, actually, over square root of 6. Minus... One. It's our formula. We what this equals? Is this gonna? It's gonna equal. Wait. We didn't have. We forgot about pi. We forgot about pi. I entirely forgot about pi. It would be pi times this integral though, so it'd be. It's gonna equal pi i equals multiply all this by pi. It's gonna be. Pi i over square root of 6 minus pi. Finally, yeah, what I'm going to do here is, um, you know what I'm going to do. Change this to natural log of negative 1, because, yeah. So, natural log of negative 1 over square root of 6 minus pi. Now, what is some natural log rule that I know about? It's dividing natural logs. 
What is square root of 6 the natural log of? It's e to the power of square root of 6. So we're going to have natural log. So erase all this. And we're going to have natural log of negative 1. Oh, not over the natural log of e to the square root of 6. It equals. Actually, minus pi. Okay, minus pi. This is going to equal the natural log of negative. It's going to be the natural log of negative 1 minus. I know. Natural log of negative 1 minus natural log of e to the 7 of e that that squared. No, it's not how it works. What is the rule? Dividing the, what is the rule for dividing natural logs? Dividing natural logs, what does it do? To divide natural logs, it's, oh. No. You don't divide the natural logs. Yeah, you don't divide the natural logs. It's if you have the natural log of something divided by something else. Well, um... Um... This is awkward. Um... Um... Just... Ignore that. Um, let's do natural log of negative 1 over square root of 6. Just, okay, just, yeah, do that, do that, okay, just do that, all right. Square! I can square. But there's no rule for multiplying two natural logs together. I'm going to get natural log of negative 1 squared over 6 minus pi. And you know what pi is the same as? It's equal to 6 pi over 6. And now what I can do, this is going to equal natural log of negative 1 squared over 6. Don't put it on here. Minus 6 pi. Can I simplify this further? No. There. That is officially the answer. Now I have to do something else. Just oh Wait, so it's going to be pi squared times i squared. So really what this is. Pi squared times i squared is just negative pi squared. So you don't want to get rid of that square? I did it wrong. I, I did. I actually did it right. I just didn't simplify it enough. So it's going to be the natural. No, no it's going to be pi pi squared. You know that equals pi squared i squared. That's going to equal negative pi squared. So negative pi squared. Minus 6 pi over 6. Now, I think we can, we can, maybe we can simplify this. How do we do that? Multiply both sides by, no, not both sides, multiply this whole thing by 6. So we're going to have 6 times negative pi squared minus 6 pi. This is going to equal our thing. So now equals negative 6 pi squared minus 36 pi. Can I simplify this further? 
Yes, I think I can. Um, negative six pi times pi, um, just, yeah, that, um, minus 36 pi. So, we can't factor out the pi, I think we can't factor out the pi. But we actually can factor out the pi, we're going to have pi times minus 6 squared minus 36. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to just get rid of the pi, okay? And now, we've done it. We know that negative 6 squared equals 6 squared. So now, we got negative 6 squared minus 36. We can take the square root, and we're going to get equal, equals, actually, no, no, no. Take the square root of all of that. 6 minus 6, which equals... Zero. We've done it. The harmonic series equals zero. Which also means the harmonic series equals one. <clears throat> um thank you all for watching. But I have one last thing I'd like to write. I see this. There. I'm not gonna get actually on an iPad. That's not the end. I have to do one last thing. Okay, let's just do one more solo and then and then we'll do zero three five again next to this time without distortion. Okay. Um